Hello everybody, this is my commentary on Without Reward, so you can officially call this the Serena Marvel Commentary Edition. Alright, so let's get started watching this, and I'll kind of give you my commentary on it. I have to say, Trey did a wonderful job editing this with as many uh, shenanigans as we had this day. It was super cold on this day, so filming was kind of difficult. This shot right here, I must have done a billion times. I just noticed that car in the frame. But, yeah, this shot took a lot of times to get right, because, like, you got school buses going by, cars going by, jackhammers. We were trying to film between sounds. So it was kind of difficult. Uh, that is Sean Stilwell. He is a very talented actor. And of course we have Vance Maber Major, the lovable Menard. Oh my god, his acting on that, it was superb. But I have to say that the best, the, the best part in this film, if I had to narrow it down to a single person that did the best acting job, let me just give you a minute. This guy did the best acting job. When you just look at how he does scenes, considering, you know, how his just facial expressions, how he just emotes so much in his face, it's, it's unreal. I have to say, it's fantastic. So, this part right here, this is when Kelvin Menard meets regular Menard. Or Maynard, as he's called in the Kelvin universe. Um, so, this part, this was kind of interesting to film, because at this part where you see uh, Kelvin Menard, um, it was cold. It was supremely cold. We were all warming our hands up in jackets. We were going into the car to take a break, because it was just so cold. But we persevered, and we got this beauty out. I actually like this. So the conversation between the two Menards I think is critical to the entire series because it kind of shows that Menard in, in the different universes might be two different people but at the end of the day it's the same sort of same sort of person. You know you're gonna get the same reaction. Emily's death affected them both the same way. So it's kind of cool. Oh I am. 1707A. What about you? This is the part, I believe, this is the part where he's talking about um, how he buried himself in his work, how he got a promotion. So, um, I would, if, if Vance ever went back and did a fan film, I, I kind of would like to see a little more of Kelvin Menard explored. Just a tiny bit. But, you know... You never know. You never know what the universe brings you. You might see that one way. We might not. Wow. So you guys sound like you're close. Coming up has to be one of my favorite scenes in this film. So, all right. Let me pause this right here. About right here, we actually got interrupted during one of our breaks. This sweet little lady was walking behind us as we were filming, and she was entirely flirting with... Uh, one of the dudes that was um, acting with us, she was like, well, what's up? You know, she had stopped and started to talk to us like she knew us. It was crazy. We must have sat there and laughed about that for a good, I don't know, 10 minutes. I can't stand her. She's condescending. You can also tell the differences between the two characters based on the facial expressions. If you ever notice, Calvin Menard has a much more stoic face, yeah, whereas so. uh, main series Menard so much more emotional. You can see it more in his eyes. The sonic screwdriver. I always kind of wondered what was the connection of you know Doctor Who and the Menard saga, but I never kind of questioned it because it had its own sort of beauty to it. Right here is my favorite scene in this entire movie. You might recognize somebody that is about to appear in this shot. So if you look right here as Menard is looking, that is a red TARDIS and that is actually me. 
Uh, I am a Time Lord, that's what they call the Pariah. So, I'm right there. I was actually in a fan film with Vance. It was something we had talked about for a long time. Um, we tossed aside a few roles together. So, just, just this entire film was extremely thrilling to make. I have to say that working with Vance is a one-of-a-kind experience because he pushes you. But at the end of the day, it's fantastic. It's, it's just... It's awesome. You know. And I have to say, if, if I had a chance to do this all again, I totally would. I would totally take the chance to film this again. Overall, my commentary on this film has to be that it's a wonderful film, it's a wonderful rendition, and overall, like, legit, you can tell the, uh, the differences between the characters, both Mainstream Menard and Kelvin Menard. As I said, they have two uh, very different personality, and I enjoyed the, you know, seeing those, those critical differences. The CGI here, it was fantastic work. You know, I didn't have anything to do in regards to this part. I didn't direct it. I didn't produce it. Um, <laughs> there's Vance's cat, Cherry. There's Vance with the sonic screwdriver. I always had this theory that, you know, Menard, both Kelvin and Mainstream, um, that they both came together. And at some point in their timeline, before they died, um, that you know, with the TARDIS and the Time Lord that we see, maybe, maybe Menard brought back Emily. That they got to live a happy life outside of what actually happened to Emily and the Sukulon incident. It's a nice little fan theory that with the TARDIS, maybe Menard got to do that. It's not something specifically stated in the series, but it'd be kind of a cool thought. And I like how, you know, Vance just keeps it real with his sets. Doesn't go out of the way to, you know, put all these fancy sets on screen. It's it's just what he has. And I feel that has, it's more authentic. I wouldn't want to miss how it all turns out. But this spot right here, it's really good. Um, and again, this is usual for Vance Major's work. You know, it's fantastic. Alright, so that was my take on the entire film. I kind of hope you enjoyed my take. So, you guys have a wonderful night. Keep watching Vance. If he releases anything else, check out his channel. Subscribe. Bye.